Whoa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the X Factor auditions. <laughs> it's not really. Um, it's a packed house. Uh, it's not. Thank you for coming along to see a live podcast being recorded. Um, obviously, we're not actually recording podcasts, we're just videoing us. Uh, and as you can see, we've got cake, uh, we've got t-shirts. Uh, those are for questions later when you ask them, hopefully if you ask them. Um, and I've also got some lovely guests, uh, which I'll introduce you to now. So my first guest here on my left uh, is chief boy band member. Uh, it's Andrew Smith, uh, lead designer yes. of uh, Tango Fiesta, uh, which is on the, on the show floor, which won the Game Jam last year and is back now with a vengeance. Uh, uh, it didn't win. It didn't win last Sorry, year. I get that no. wrong. In my head, it did. <laughs> so... Uh, it took, you well, were, thank you. You yeah. were effectively runner-up. Yeah, yeah, and the runner-up prize was essentially a publishing deal, so, yeah, we're happy. So, uh, Andrew's tried a bit harder this year by baking a cake. Yeah, yeah, always overcompensating. So, um, I don't know, if, are we going to be able to give these guys... I think, unless we're all really hungry, there is enough for quite a lot of people. Everyone. Depending on questions. <laughs> Everyone has to have a piece. Everyone has to have a piece. I'm going to be a while with the cutting. That's what I'll say. Well, it's thank you very much. And these, I mean, they, that's not a very considerable knife, but... It's, that's not a knife. That's not a knife. <laughs> um, my next uh, lovely guest, I don't know how many people recognise him here, or maybe just say not something in your, uh, in your lovely voice. Hello, welcome to the Eurogamer.net podcast. Does anyone recognise that? He used to be the host of the podcast. Uh, it's Tom Back Champion, um, who also... Uh, helps put on this event, runs this event as well. So, mm. how's uh, it all going? Uh, yeah, uh, very well, I think. Although I'm uh, at the point of exhaustion, uh, I have to say. So this might not be a very high energy uh, podcast. Keep for yourself me. moving. That's, keep that's why we're on stools rather than sitting back in chairs to keep the keep the energy up. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm good. Thank you, Bertie. Yeah. Shoulders up. Project. 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 The, Talk to the back of the room. Uh, yeah. So. Fantastic. Hi. Well, hello, Tom. Thank you for being here. No problem. Um, my next lovely guest, I'm assuming he's lovely, uh, it's John Ribbons from Roll7, uh, the maker of excellent, amazing uh, Vita game, um, Oli Oli, um, and also Not A Hero, which is on the show floor. They're both on the show floor. Uh, not A Hero is still alpha. It's not out yet. But, uh, hi, John. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very good. Um, do you want to sing a solo or anything? or? <laughs> No, I'm doing a duet with Tom. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know any duets. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming along. Thanks for having me. Uh, are you enjoying yourself? Yes, it's been awesome. I'm now ready to go to bed. A uh, bit tired. But yeah. It's been really good. It's been, uh, it's been a long show. I'm sure you guys are tired. I'm probably the only reason you're in here, so you get to sit down for half an hour. <laughs> They're laughing because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> More chairs oh. next year. Um, the final guest uh, is uh, someone I work with every day. Um, it's Tom Phillips, a uh, staff writer for Eurogamer. Hi, Tom Phillips. Hello. What have you been doing here? Um, I've been watching some of the sessions. I've been, Friday was kind of a regular news day, so uh, we got to do some of our work from Res, which was quite nice. What work have nice you been doing? What, what, what exciting journalism have you been doing? Um, yeah, exciting stuff. Uh, I'm working on some stuff for next week that I can't quite talk about yet, but uh, enjoying some of the... Like what, things. Tom? I can't talk about it. Oh, my God. Tell us, it's like I'm being interviewed. It's odd to be on the other side of the table. Answer the question, it's Tom. It's very bright light. <laughs> it's very bright light. Um, also, I like these stools. They are kind of boy bandy. I feel like we're going like to do a verse, and then we're going to stand up for the chorus. Everyone um, I've been on a panel with has remarked the same thing. It's like a... Are you saying I'm unoriginal? No, I'm not. I think That's you not are. what I'm saying. It's a very funny I'm thing. I'm saying you're else also creative, uh, like they are. Um, so, we're going to talk a bit about the show, uh, then you're going to get a chance to ask some questions, if you have any. So, do think now about questions, because it's really awkward when I ask for questions and no one moves. And then if I have to pad. The question is can I have some cake? Then that's, that's can I have a t shirt? Right. No, Tom. You should be wearing one, really. Um, so, it's a lovely event. I hope you've all had a nice time. I'm sure you have had a nice time. But, um, Tom Champion, uh, these events don't just happen overnight, do they? 
I wish they did. Oh, no, actually, I wish they didn't, because then I wouldn't have a job, I suppose. But, uh, no, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, lot of work, I guess, behind the scenes, a lot of people involved. How much work? Because you never seem to be that busy. <laughs> you only work two weekends a year, this and uh, EGX London, right? Yeah, I basically get six months off after this and start working again the second week of September. How, how far away does it start? When, when do you start... Like organising it? Uh, sort of almost immediately after you finish uh, an event. Uh, you're obviously looking at dates for the next year, venues and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, almost straight away. And the sales guys, David Lilly and Matt Stiles, who work on the commercial side, uh, you know, talking to publishers all year round about both events now. Um, and what's been, what's been the biggest challenge you've faced this year, putting on this, this show? Well, um, I guess as you've noticed, it's, it's a fair bit bigger than, uh, than, it, than last year, almost sort of double the, double the size. I think it was important for us that we sort of grew the show, but it kind of tried to keep its sort of indie spirit uh, while making a bigger event. I think that was probably the hardest thing, but uh, I think hopefully we've achieved that. It seems to be, you know, there's, there's a hell of a lot of very, very good indie games on the show floor, coupled with, you know, some bigger titles like Titanfall and Hearthstone, Alien Isolation, and... Um, Titanfall, the game we write about every day on Eurogamer. <laughs> Shh, don't tell them Yeah, that. it had to be here, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so I think that was the most difficult thing. But, I mean, hopefully, anecdotally, anyway, from the people I've spoken to on the show floor, everyone seems to be having a good time. So, hopefully, that is, that is Are you all case. having a good time? Yeah, you see? Someone say no. The guy on the end said no. <laughs> Do you want some cake? Will that help? <laughs> Will that help? Can we bribe you into <laughs> saying it's good? Fantastic. Excellent, thank you. Whole cake. whole cake. Well, I don't know whole if you can cake. have the whole cake. I probably can't even launch it that far. It's not a food eating competition as well, but you could <laughs> well, try it with be. your hands. We should do that. That sounds great. Next year, eat, eating competition. So they eat the cake, and then what do they win? More cake. Brilliant. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> the, the, the competition fresh cake. effectively just eats itself. It's brilliant. Um, yeah. Fantastic. How many people have been at the show? Uh, we've had about 15,000 wow. this year, which... Um, I th- is obviously a, a big improvement on... How many people go to, to EGX London, just to put it into perspective? Uh, okay, so last year, I think... Sorry, I'm kind of frazzled. Uh, about 80,000. So, you know, it's still... Uh, That's 80, just in case anyone... 80, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's still kind of small compared to, compared, to, compared to London, but obviously it's grown pretty quickly from last year. And, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been good. I mean, I, hopefully everyone's... Everyone's had a good time, as, as good a time as they had last year. That's the, that's the hope, anyway. So what's the, what's the plan for... I know you probably don't have an exact plan for next year, but what's the kind of broad plan? Like, bigger, better, still in Birmingham? Birmingham is going to be massive. Yeah, uh, we haven't kind of made uh, any final decisions on, uh, you know, where it's going to is be. This a, is this an elaborate no comment? <laughs> it's just, this is just me mumbling now until you <laughs> then answer the I'm glad it's question. you and not me. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. We obviously got to sit down and, and review how this, how the show's gone this year, and make some decisions about what we do next year. But I'm sure we'll, that Res will be back. If you guys have got some suggestions, we'd love to hear them on the microphone in just a minute. Um, so, Res is is a lovely place to see lots of very different games. You know, it's not just one publisher dominating the show floor with this yeah. big bombastic stand and, and and showing off all their stuff. There's loads of games out there. Uh, from teams that don't, you know, don't have money to exhibit uh, at these other places. Um, Tom Phillips, let's go go over to you. Uh, what have you What have you seen here that's that's tickled your fancy? Um, I think everyone's been kind of taken a bit back by Gang Beat. Is that his name? Gang Beat. Gang Beast. Gang Beast. Gang Beast. Sorry, it was so good. What is I forgot it? to look at the name under it. I was just busy playing it. It's a four-player or up to four-player brawler and. Um, I, I wrote the. I, I think that the, the the art style is kind of claymation. It looks a bit like Tony Hart's morph. Uh, if he'd gone out in Croydon, and oh, I had remember a few that. Beers cool. And had a bit of a punch. Uh, and yeah, you can pick people up, throw them out of the ring. It's like an a, a arena-based uh, affair, and you can throw people into stage hazards, through glass windows of pubs, that kind of thing. It's a lot of fun. If you've got some mates and you're here at Res, give it a try. Fantastic. Um, and John, how about you? Have you been? Have you had a chance to get peel yourself away from your stand and go and see something else? A little bit. So uh, I went and checked out uh, Standpoint, which is way off in the corner, which is like a 
gravity switching puzzle game. Okay. Um, with a lovely soundtrack. Uh, and I briefly got to try out The Escapists, because you guys mentioned it on your, your thing today. But then I got dragged away to come here, so I'm going to go back oh, and I had a go later. on Escapist as well, and I think maybe the, de the demo ran a little short for me, because I, I liked the kind of frantic trying to keep up and then yeah. I dig your... So you escape from prison in this game, uh, Escapist. Or you, to. Yeah, you try to. All the, all the while trying to like rush to the, the workout benches in the prison and, and rush to or the showers and try not job. to get like <laughs> shivved at the same time by, by other people there. Um, but I, yeah, I was frantically trying to keep up and then the demo was like, demo over. And I was like, oh, well, what did, did you think I of didn't it? even get that close. Oh. So I went and did my laundry and then uh, got some keys and stuff and then got shanked, um, <laughs> which, was, which was a shame. Which is what happens in real prisons. So. Yes. Um, Andrew, what have you played? Um, so ooh, that was loud. Um, I really enjoyed Gangweas as well. I was a massive fan of Power Stone, Power Stone 2, and it reminded me of that sort of mad, over-the-top, four-player action sort of arena thing, but with crazy, funny physics. So that's a great one. But um, I've got to give a shout to Mega Coin Squad. I don't. Um, I didn't see it. Oh, it's fantastic. So uh, Big Pixel Studios, if I'm not wrong, uh, they do a lot of mobile stuff, and this is their first sort of uh, PC console game, and it's it's a four-player. Um, single screen race to grab either, depending on the mode, a giant coin and hold on for it for as long as possible, um, or all the coins or, or power ups. And you basically just, it's just four of you with sort of standard jump dash powers. Um, it's a bit towerful esque, I guess, but more 16 bit sort of colourful Nintendo Sega esque kind of a version. Yeah, it's really, really good. I, uh, Towerfall is, is a game that I really enjoyed. I know it's a kind of an, a, a bit more of a known quantity. It's not, not so new to this show, but it's good fun. It's a four-player beat-em-up. It's, like, it's a bit like Smash Brothers in a way, but um, you get one life and it's like boom, straight away dead. And I won, I think. So that's why I liked it. That really enhanced my opinion of it because I won. It's effective bribery, isn't it? Um, I also played Alien Isolation. This little game, I don't know if you've seen it out there. <laughs> Um, which which was, was fantastic, and a lot of the talk, a lot of the people I've been talking to have been talking about how scared they've been by this game. A few people were like, they had to put the pad down and walk away. Uh, it is scary. It's quite unsettling. Um, I, <laughs> I recommend it. It's, I recommend it's probably like the only game at the show that people have said, I really don't want to play it on Oculus Rift because I might die of a heart attack. It's crazy. I played another um, game... Uh, a survival horror game like that, uh, which was very much runaway survival horror, uh, Monstrum. Uh, and I did it with the Oculus. Uh, it's the first time I've used Oculus Rift, bizarrely enough, but um, it was great. And then this great big sort of zombie werewolf thing stormed down the hallway and killed me. And I was like flinching as it came at me. Come at me, bro. And uh, trying, to, trying to get it off of me. Um, I was playing that next to you. I think I heard you swear quite loudly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying not to now, uh, in replicate. I don't know why. Uh, I'm trying and, to... and playing Alien as well, I think. Yeah, I, get, I do get quite vocal uh, when I play these games. It's like a release. There was a member of the editorial team at Eurogamer who couldn't finish that demo. I, I I'm not going to name that person, but who had to <laughs> leave before the end. It got too scary for them. Fantastic. Well, I want to hear your, your questions now, because I, I, mean, I, could, I could bang on uh, talking about this, that. I want to hear what you guys have been playing, what you liked. Uh, any questions you've got for us, we'll try and answer. Um, so there's a microphone in the middle. Um, don't be scared about going up to it. Please, someone look like you're going to move up to it. No one is. Yes, yes! Fantastic. Um, so yeah, just come and ask, just chat. If you just want to say hello and you know, ask our advice on the weather or far away. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, I was wondering if we could go old school and have a bit of a game of Sandy Isle Games. Sandy wow. Isle Games. Tom, do you want to take the lead on this? Because you're the, the maestro. Old school. I can't even remember what that was. was it's, it? Isn't it like, it's like Desert Island Discs, isn't oh, it? It, 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 it was exactly like Desert Island Discs, except we didn't want to say that for fear of copyright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what game would I take to a desert island? Yeah, for or the perhaps. rest of my days? Or what yeah. game from the show floor, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Well themed. You're a good host. Yeah. I should, I should. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me see. Uh, I don't, I've, well, I've only played a handful of games. Uh, I, I played Cloud Built, uh, sort of fast-paced, kind of free-run games, a bit like third-person Mirror's Edge kind of thing, and that was really cool. Um, so, but actually, I'd probably go with Wasteland 2, because that just seems incredible. 
and I really like RPGs. And it's, and it's quite, it'd be quite bleak, like being it. stuck on a... Yeah, exactly. It would remind me of my immediate surroundings. Yeah. Uh, that is definitely what I would want. Reinforcing you being trapped on a desert yeah, island. So. Exactly. And that can only be uh, a good thing. Um, how about uh, you, John? What, what game from the show would you take um, to a, a desert island forever and ever and ever? Maybe Gods will be watching, because it's almost like training for being okay. on a desert island. We could simulate the whole situation first, what's going to happen. But probably in reality, Hotline Miami 2. So I think I could play that indefinitely, just running around murdering people. Very good. Um, Andrew, how about you? What, what game would you say? He's going to say Tango Fiesta, aren't you? No, no. I mean, it's not finished. I should take it with me and finish it. But, um, I could be mean and be like, I'd take something I really didn't like so that I really encourage myself to leave the desert island. Um, but I think genuinely, I don't know, something like Dream maybe, because it has a VR headset and then you don't have to worry about being on an island anymore. You'd have to be careful about sunburn, obviously. You don't want to get too into the game and That's forget true. about protecting See, yourself. I clearly haven't thought this through. Well, I have. Uh, get back so. to me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Phillips, how about you? Alien isolation. Um, you be scared. It would day. make you feel better about your surroundings being on an island uh, after coming. You're like, oh, phew, I'm just on an island and not in a uh, ship in space. Or I might take Hearthstone because with a couple of years I might finally be good at it. <laughs> Very good. I hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, in keeping with the theme of the show, obviously, uh, do you feel the indie scene has become the place to be for a lot of new and creative ideas, as opposed to the blockbuster, AAA, big budget uh, scene in the gaming industry right now? I feel, personally, as someone who's just got a PS4, there's not a lot of new ideas in the AAA scene right now. It's quite disappointing to me, personally. So I've been playing a lot of indie games. I'll just want to your opinion. <laughs> I think it's fascinating that um, it, the next generation isn't necessarily, uh, you know, people look to the next generation to bring them uh, next generation experiences. And those next generation experiences are actually, in my opinion, they're coming from the indie scene and people are opening up uh, to, towards that. And so the next generation, for me, is a bit people becoming uh, more welcoming of uh, a bigger variety of games, even though they you know, might look like a SNES game or something, they, people are, are getting into it, which is precisely what um, Sony particularly, I know Microsoft are doing it, but they're doing it in their clunky way, but, um, <laughs> but uh, Sony are yeah, you know, walking around wearing We Love, Play uh, we love PlayStation, <laughs> We Love uh, Indie uh, games. So, um, I think it's quite exciting. I'll stop talking, someone, someone else can. I think a lot of it's to do with the tools and things. I mean, something that's been sort of recurring for us is people really surprised at how little we've worked on our game. And I know other people have worked on their game for, you know, it's like six to eight weeks worth of work and you can demo it and it can, you know, be held I up against... I thought you were saying people were surprised how little we worked on our game. <laughs> Just for a stop. Which is, yeah, in general, it's like, wow, you guys, this is your full-time job. Um, but that's down to things like Unity and, and Game Maker and all of this kind of stuff. And it's, you know, they've been bubbling away for a long time. And I think we've hit a point where it's kind of like a, I don't know, a meeting of, yeah, the, the sort of the money men see that there's a lot of, well, they can basically plug their gaps in their release schedules with these little cool games that everyone seems to enjoy. And at the same time, we benefit from it from the extra exposure. But it wouldn't happen without the tools being mature. And I think that Unity in particular, and I'm sure lots of others have, have really come to a point where you can make a really, really good game in a very, very small amount of time. And that's traditionally not been the case and still isn't in AAA. You know, I, I dread to think how long it took, say, Infamous uh, to, to get to like first playable. I mean, it would have been months and months and months and months and hundreds of thousands of dollars. For us, it's about eight weeks and, you know, some cake. It's, uh, it's wildly different. Is that, is that how you, you, what you, like, kind of, how you, the money goes around? It's just cake? Yeah, yeah. It's so that I can dodge all the things about, oh, you pay your monkeys in peanuts. It's like, no. <laughs> no one ever thinks to ask about the cake. Um, and talking of cake, uh, would you like to come and have a slice of cake? Yes, please. Oh, there was the, guy, the other guy as well. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah we, we did miss yeah. someone else as well. Would you like to come and have a slice of and cake? Stop me talking for it, someone else can. And do have it. a T-shirt as well, actually. Come, come on up, come on up. Help yourselves. I think... Um, well, you have a choice of extra large, and that's it. The biggest you have. That's so. That I think that is. 
and the t-shirt. I'm on the Euro Games. And a t-shirt for you, good sir. I've picked out an extra large because that's the only size we've got. The amount of time I've booked Tom to be there. So while they're, uh, while they're cutting cake, uh, can we have another question, please? Excellent. There's lots of um, early access games here, either discussed here or on the show floor. So like Daisy, Project Zomboid, Stronghold Crusader yeah. 2, Prison Architect. How important is it to get games into users' hands as quickly as possible? Um, John, why don't you jump off in this one? Because you, you're um, alpha, aren't you, on uh, Not A Hero? And we are alpha. We're not doing early access, but it has been really awesome because this is the first time we've been showing the game uh, here. So it has been really nice to realize most of the stuff we thought that people would hate or notice, they didn't. Um, they broke it in completely new and different ways that we never expected. Um, but I guess, yeah, it's, it, it's really good to get like real people playing it. I think probably you notice the mistakes more as a developer uh, than other people do, and it's really cool. I guess it's really inspiring because you put a lot of time into making a game before you bring it here, so it's nice to see people enjoying it, um, or, or just walking away and knowing that you, know, you need to change something and fix it to make it engaging. So is, is it more a motivation tool for the development team or a marketing exercise? I think it's probably a bit of both. Um, I think it's probably really good because you, you have an audience before you release. Uh, you have people who are kind of have a vested interest in your game as well because they've played it, they've given you feedback and maybe even seen that feedback implemented. Um, but yes, I guess that is also marketing. <laughs> And Andrew, what's your, because you, uh, you, are you planning to do early access, I think? We are, yeah. Yeah. Um, in about six weeks. In about six weeks. Oh. Yeah, get that in there. Um, yeah, it's, so I missed the question, I was cutting coke. So you might as well just fire away again. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of early access or alpha unfinished games here. Yeah. How important is it to get games into users' hands as quickly as possible? Okay, bro. Um, for me, very. Um, I think any technique, any sort of route to market that you can get, that sounded really corporate for an it indie, did. didn't it? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Whoa, it did, yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but any way that you can get your game in the hands of the players that are going to become the fans is, is, is great. And as soon as you're confident that you've got something representative, you know, um, even up to early access, you know, things are going to change as soon as... I'm a great believer that I'll design something you know, as a team, we'll make something, but as soon until someone plays it, it's not actually important. And after that point, it is the players. Like, who am I to tell someone how they're supposed to have fun in my game? Yeah. I hope, you know, that professionally I can kind of predict that and support that. But you know, I'm not going to kind of complain if someone enjoys reloading their gun over and over. That's fine, and that's the the value of Steam Early Access and, and, and things like that. It's just getting out there, getting real opinions from real people, not just these imagined gamers in my head. Um, so, so it's fantastic. I hope that answers your question. Thank Would you, you like a slice of cake? Oh, yes, please. Come, come on down. <laughs> um, this is our last T-shirt, I'm afraid, but we've got lots of cake. Oh. Uh, and I believe, Andrew, you also have a, 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 a little gift that uh, you could give away. Would you like to explain it to our uh, wonderful audience? Yes, yeah, so um, I've got um, the characters in our games. Uh, I brought a dog tag each for, for one of the four characters. Uh, it's limited to this show. Um, so I'm pretending that we're a big deal before we are. I hope everyone's okay with that. Um, we gave one away in the, in the talk the other day and I've got one left. So That's quite um, a big you can get a dog tag. I'm not sure, even sure which one it is actually, uh, which Hollywood character we haven't honest to God ripped off. Oh, it's Miller, uh, Australian Force Patrol, birthday 1956. If you know who that is, then, then you can get it. I think that's probably the qualification. But yeah, okay, expertly that's, done. That's a, that's a very big slice. So, uh, that is big. Here, like, have a fork, yeah. have a napkin. You can share it with your friends. Ooh. Have two napkins, because like, they're stuck together. <laughs> there we go. It's, 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 it's all perfect. planned perfectly. Yeah. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, hello. And oh. uh, uh, next year, um, can we have more Dean Hall? <laughs> How much more Dean Hall can you take? As much as I can take. <laughs> uh, Rizzed. <laughs> Dean Hall with his pin. I can't do it properly. It's almost you're, like he's here. You're great with accents. What's that? You're great with accents. Well, I try. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you're you're forcing me. You're, you're encouraging me into an accent. <laughs> I don't want to do it because I'll offend someone. You might be here. We can't see. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Is he here? No, mm. he's not here. Um, We'd love to have uh, Dean Hall here again. It, well, he's got a nice uh, relationship with Rez uh, because he was here the first one. 
uh, when Daisy was blowing up. So his story is kind of followed along uh, and played out with Rez involved, which has been great. Uh, but you know, he's leaving Bohemia at some point. He, might, he may still be there this time next year, but even if he is, maybe he comes with someone else. Uh, who he's handing the project over to, or I don't know. He, you know, he might just be doing something else and not. Yeah. Uh, but he's awesome, and he makes a lot of time for uh, for people as well, for the community. I I don't think I've seen I don't think I've seen anyone put that kind of energy into the community, and I I think it works really well for him. And yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good that people are uh, you know pumped up about him. So cool. Thanks. All right. Thank, would you like a bit of cake? Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, Andrew, would you like to cut this one? Because uh, okay. I okay. cut half the cake last time. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, burning question, what flavour of cake? <laughs> what flavour is this cake? It's uh, lemon drizzle sponge cake. Fantastic. Awesome. I'll the have a best large kind. piece for that one. Just <laughs> now. now, my question is... I'll leave it out because it's I forgot. <laughs> yeah, what's your least favourite genre in video games? Um, mine is Japanese dating sims. I don't, I don't like those. They're just, Forever alone. Yeah. <laughs> They're not my favourite. Tom, what's your, what's your least favourite? Or, or John, whoever wants to... Should we do it at the same time? Do it at the same time. The same game. On three. Okay, one, two, three. Minecraft Japanese dating sims. <laughs> I didn't hear either of that. I heard Japanese dating scenes. What was yours, John? The, like the dearth of Minecraft clones on XBI. Minecraft clones. Flappy Bear clones. Strong one. Tom, how about you? Tropico. Oh, that Tom's is actually a huge Tropico fan, you see. It's a genre all on its own, and it's the greatest of the genres. Um, my least favourite, I don't know, probably puzzle games or something. They always make me feel really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, well, okay. Which one's particular? Oh, I don't know. Name a puzzle game. Tetris. That one. Tetris. Tetris. Oh, rubbish. Ooh. It's never going to catch on. Um, Andrew, how about you? Um, yeah, um, sort of, I was going to say simulation games, but now that means hilarious, over-the-top, you know, goat sort of things. Um, but old simulators, you know, things that aren't really games, things that are kind of teaching tools. Uh, they're probably my least favourite. So education. Education. I yeah. hate education. <laughs> I just thought Goat Simulator, when it's Game of the Year, you could call it Goaty. Oh. And it is. So, well, Genius. if it's Game of the Year. Um, how about you? What's your least favourite genre? I'd have to say point and click. Point and click's rubbish. Yeah. Who likes that? I can only point or click. I can't do both. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Would you like a slice of cake? Hello. Hi. Um... First day, when you asked uh, which game was favourite from out there, I'd say the that was Terra Tech from the. Oh, sorry, Terra Tech would be the my favourite game from out there. From I didn't today. see that one. What's what's that? It's the one where it's it's one of these yeah. very very small ones from the alley. Kind of yeah, the uh, left field collection. That's the one. Uh, it's one where you kind of build a tank and you shoot, destroy the other tanks, and you keep. Scavenging their pieces and oh, kind of a bit like uh, it looks a bit Lego-y. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. So. yeah. Right. Um, my question is, just out of interest, uh, what would be the greatest challenge in putting on an event like this, and does it, how does it compare when you, with the larger event down in London? Is it still the same challenge, or the same aspect? Well, I think I'm best placed to answer that. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe Go you. Um, biggest challenge? I don't know. I, there's so many different aspects of... I think it's the, when the events get to a certain size, there's so many sort of different details uh, and different elements that you have to kind of consider. That it's a question of... Like knocking it, down the venue. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, is, that is a hurdle that we will have to overcome. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's just everything about it, man. Um, just the lead up. Uh, this is the kind of enthusiasm he's This is the kind of high day energy day stuff basis. you get uh, into day three of an event. Sorry, I've been up here since Tuesday. And it's, <laughs> it's just, it's not good. My brain is mush. Uh, am I still answering this question? <laughs> no. Am I still talking? Is this thing up? Can I have some cake? 
<laughs> you can have a slice of cake. I've got a very dry mouth now. That's the only problem. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all pretty difficult. There you go. So a uh, career in events. Uh, uh, wait. Do you want exciting. a job? Because I think I might be fired after this. <laughs> Come and have a slice of cake. Hello. Hello. Um, what's everyone's thoughts on the Oculus Rift being bought by Facebook? Originally, it was quite underground, but now it's sort of going to go, well, whichever way they seem to take it. I had a chance to play Dream yet, but I'm going to queue up. Just wondering everyone's thoughts of where it's going to go and whether it's good for it or bad. Tom, do you have a... Um, on the face of it, it's, it's going to be pretty annoying for people who have backed it as a device that uh, was supposed to revolutionise gaming. Uh, and if you looked at what Mark Zuckerberg said in his statement, it was all about experiences and everyone had nightmare visions of suddenly their newsfeed being projected into their faces. And um, I guess, you know... It is surprising, but at the same time, it's not. Um, VR will continue, I think, to be uh, a, a really cool piece of in-development technology for gaming. Uh, Sony's Project Morpheus and whatever Microsoft are probably up to uh, will still come along. And if you have to look at, uh, if to find the silver lining to it, I think that a lot of a lot more people are going to be able to play with Oculus now uh, because of this, because of the money behind it. Um, it was a really, it is still a very cool piece of development kit, but uh, if it gets into more people's hands because of it, then I think that's a good thing. So it, it's, you know, I can see both sides of it, but I think that in the long run, um, there might be some positives. Hey, they could maybe. rename it on your Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, Facebook for your face. Yeah. Andrew, um, so looking at it for, with like indie eyes, in the eyes. What do you think? Has is, is is your perception of, of Oculus changed now? Um, I don't know, not really. I think one of the biggest things for me was I quite like the idea of people with tiny flats who haven't got room for a massive telly just buy an Oculus Rift and then they've got the massive telly, they're just on their face. Um, so that's not going to change um, in the fact that it's ridiculous. Uh, but specifically, I think that Facebook, taking a step back, Facebook are you know, a social company you know facebook is their one product but they're crazy to not look beyond that and so i think that's the play that they're making you know connecting people quite literally in the same space rather than on a computer screen you know that's that's where they're going looking at someone like um well not someone but like the reaction um from notch and minecraft mojang you know they cancelled i believe they cancelled yeah the, my, they pulled the minecraft the, yeah. thing and it's like which that's, is going to be free for for oculus uh, yeah. but it's, it's, it, yeah. it seems like a move that, well, they can afford to make that. It wasn't going to make or break their company. So to really see where indies are going to take it and whether it's actually going to affect us as gamers, I would look to people who are much more invested in it in a sort of project-by-project project basis. You know, I don't think that's really representative of how most people are going to react to it. I think there's, there's not been a lot of other... Um, decisive moves against it as yeah. a gaming platform. So I think we're going to see as well with all the money that presumably is now flooding into the company. Not that they weren't raising money before, but I, you know we're going to see it come to market quicker, probably better than it was. The perception thing about you know is it still an indie gaming champion? If you know if it ever was, and it did look that way, that's something we, I think we'll have to wait and see. You know, I don't. I'm not sure. So that's <laughs> a. De decisive answer. So we've got time for one more question. I hope that answers your question. Would you like some cake? Yes, please. Hello. Hi. Um, what's the craziest thing you've done on Goat Simulator? Oh, I haven't. I haven't played it. Has anyone played Goat you Simulator? To, you need to play it. No, sorry. Oh, we haven't played Goat Simulator. What? What have you played it? Um, a little bit. Yeah, I haven't put a lot of time into it, but um, I came across a really strange bug where I just flew for an infinite amount of time, and that was it. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. As long as it has yelling goats in, I don't mind. It's, it's got all sorts. So, that's, yeah, that's what I hope for. Um, well, come and grab yourself a slice of cake. Uh, that is all we've got time for. You're probably relieved to find out. I hope you've had a nice sit down, um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. The Game Jam is up next. Uh, so the teams have had a day to make a game from scratch uh, and they, worked, they found out what the theme was on the day. Uh, as you'll know, it's quite tough. 
Uh, it's quite experimental, it's quite fun. Uh, so if you fancy that, that's next. And then there's Frozen End Zone, I think, afterwards uh, at five. Um, but if not, you can just go and play loads of games or go home. Don't, don't do that. But uh, I, hope you've had, uh, I hope you've had fun. Uh, so thank you to my guests, Andrew, Tom, John, Tom. And uh, thank you from me, Bertie. Thank you.